Hey, Southside, welcome to our first online service. I want you in your homes and wherever you're watching this, on your phone or at work, I want you to really feel like you're at church. So if you're sitting there in your home, sing with us. If I accidentally say something funny or something, laugh at it. Just try to remember that there's people all over town that are in the same position we're in. And we're not the church because of a building. We're a church because of you guys. So be with us and just participate as much as you can. We're going to do a couple songs. We're going to do Amazing Grace and a song called Good Grace at the end. This week, if you want to Google the lyrics or look them up so you have them, start doing that right now and you'll be ready for those um, at the beginning and the end of the service. And I'm going to share a message of hope this week. We all need hope. God's going to do great things through all the things that we're going through. So this is Andy and Ian and Ansley and we're going to sing together about God's amazing grace. And even though it might feel weird if you're sitting in your home, if you're doing something, just stand up and join us and sing to God and enjoy Him. Set free. 
Let's all pray together, all right? Go ahead and close your eyes and bow your heads. God, what a week it has been. What unprecedented events and realities we have experienced this week. And, and Lord, I can just picture the people I'm talking to are tired. Some are fearful. Some are emotional. God, some may be having a fear right now or an anxiety. And there may be even some out there that are just thinking, well, what's the big deal? Why all of this? Isn't it just like the, the one before? But God, here in, in a way that's never happened before, our church is gathered all over the city, united, wondering how to reach out, wondering how to be a good Christian when we've been commanded to keep away from people. And your word speaks to us, God. I pray that you would deliver hope through your word today. I pray that someone watching this video, this church service would become saved today and would give their life to Jesus Christ. I pray that you would unleash through our church and through all the great churches in Spokane and in Washington and our nation and all across the world the hope of Jesus Christ. God, you've got this. God, you're sovereign. God, you're in control. And as we attempt to make some sense of what's going on around us and to find joy and encouragement through the holy word of God today, Lord, we empty ourselves and we ask you to fill us. We ask for that amazing grace to be present in our lives, in our relationships, that at the end of this trial that our church and all churches that love Jesus would be stronger and more faithful than ever before. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you've never been to church online before, it's a thrill to have you with us today. Make sure you hit that little square on the video that makes it uh, get bigger so you can watch the whole thing. You'll notice on the right side of our website, we've got some study guides for grown-ups to go through and study God's Word, but there's also some cool stuff for kids. And you'll see that you can make an offering on our website, and you'll see that there's a Jesus card if you're interested in knowing more about Jesus Christ. If you have a prayer request or you're new to our church, we want you to click one of those buttons and let us know that you were with us today. Today, I just feel that God has laid on my heart a message of hope for our church and for anyone that's listening right now. God is going to fill you with hope. Just pull on that hope rope. Don't be a dope who says, nope, I don't want that hope. I'll find another way to cope. Get filled with God's hope. Let me recite to you from God's word, Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. I want to give you a message of hope today. I want you to see that you have God's hope and that you can be a display of God's hope for this world. Maybe read the scripture out loud with me today, right in your homes. Is anybody out there in their pajamas? Read the scriptures with me, Romans 15, 13. Read it out loud. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. I am filled, you guys, with belief and enthusiasm that God is going to use the events of our day to bring people back to Him. While churches all over Spokane, all over Washington, all over our nation, and all over the world are forced to give up their normal way of meeting together for several weeks, I mean, really, no one knows how long. I'm convinced that when we come back together, our churches and our small groups and our friends' homes where we meet with family and brothers and sisters in Christ, I just see that it is going to be such a joyous celebration, 
such an amazing party that these churches will be fuller both with people and with joy than ever before. When we come back from this and we get together, people are going to start to choose their faith and their church family over the lies and the amusements of this world that so easily distract us every day. Thousands in our country, maybe millions globally, will bow their knees and return to the Lord as they go through this experience and see the way that you guys shine for Jesus Christ. Why? Because we got the hope. Ain't nobody else got the hope. We got the hope. We've got Jesus. Over the last couple of days, like many of you, I've been to Costco. One of you ran me over. I'm not going to name you by name. I've been to the grocery store. I've been to a coffee place or two. I've done some different things. And you know what I've seen building? Panic, anxiety, a little bit of toilet paper-based greed. People feel weird and panicked and squirrely and worried. I got my hair cut yesterday. Thanks for noticing. It does look good. Uh, kind of right in the middle of the madness, I realized we're going to be only video for four to 20 weeks. Who knows? And I thought, I should probably get this mange on my head cut. Worst time to go in. I go in there, and it's just a ghost town. And it's kind of when everything was going threat level midnight on Friday. Emergency declaration and all those kind of things. And it felt weird to be there. There's only six or seven of us in this big place. And the emotions were palpable. There was fear on an older man's face and on his lips. He just kind of kept repeating as he was getting his hair cut. It sure is a weird world that we live in. It sure is a weird world that we live in. Sadness in one of the employees as she thought about her 80-plus-year-old uh, mom and dad and tearing up and worrying about how this was going to affect them. In the nearly empty business, some of the employees were vocal and voiced their financial concerns and what would happen if people stopped coming in and, and how could they pay their mortgage. I don't know these people. They don't know me that well on this particular day, and yet there's no pretense, no hiding, just real. And can I tell you, with no bragging or insensitivity to how you may be processing this, I had something in that little room of five or six, seven people that no one else had. I had the hope of Jesus Christ. And they were all looking so forlorn and so worried, and I tried to be compassionate and be a good pastor and all of those things. But I had the opportunity when they asked, well, what do you think, to say, you know what? I think it's going to be okay. And I'm at peace with God. Because no matter what happens, whatever this world has for me, I'm ready. And I saw this look even of calm come across this lady's face who had cut my hair before and I did have a little bit of a relationship with. Now, I'm not looking for trouble or hardship. I hope this whole thing blows over. But I'm not scared about anything I was able to tell them because I know where I'm going if I die. I know where I'm going if I live. I'm going towards Jesus. I'm moving towards the hope. Jesus himself said, and don't miss this, he said, who can add one foot to their life by worrying or by anxiety or about imagining every terrible end? Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. God's going to fill me with hope. I'm just going to pull on that hope rope. I'm not going to be a dope who says, nope, I don't want that hope, or I'll find another way to cope. I'm going to get filled with God's hope. And I want to walk you through the passage. May the God of hope. Just going to walk through every little piece of the passage, and it's going to be so rich and so deep and so encouraging. And when we're done and we're singing together at the end, you're going to find that fear subsiding and that joy of the Lord and that hope creeping back in. May the God of hope. Don't miss who he is. The Hebrews called him Elohim Yaakov, the God who is my only hope. No, nerds, Obi-Wan Kenobi is not your only hope. God 
is your only hope. Hope is not painkillers or liquor or the opposite sex or riches. Hope is in God. The Jewish people would possibly, the ancient Jewish people would possibly laugh at our troubles right now. We're worried about toilet paper and if we're going to have enough canned soup. They wandered the desert for 40 years. They were enslaved. They ate manna for 40 years. Remember that when you're on your sixth flavor of ramen in a couple weeks. And going through all of that, they said, Elohim, Yaakov, you're my only hope, God. Let's walk through the passage because God's going to fill us with hope. Just pull on that hope rope and don't be a dope who says, nope, I don't want that hope. I want some other way to cope. Get filled with God's hope. May the God of hope, the scriptures say, fill you. I was so impressed with one of our elders the other night. We were meeting John, one of our church elders. Yesterday, we were talking about what's going on in the world and how God is going to use it in our lives, in Southside's lives, in a million different ways. And he shared that he'd always known intellectually that everything he has belongs to God. And he would have circled that on a spiritual test. He would have said, I believe that. But it's come to grip him in the last couple of weeks that that's actually true. That everything he has could slip away depending on how this goes. And it was so beautiful to be with my brothers and to have a moment of reality. And he says, now I know it really and truly could. And for so many other people that I know. And he said, well, then, if that's true, if those are the things we care about, where really is our treasure then? I believe through the COVID-19 coronavirus scare, God's going to show the wise in this world that it's him. He's the treasure. Jesus is the treasure. He is the hope. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. But first, can I help you find that hope as you're listening in today? Our eyes are on our troubles right now, on our anxieties, on our worries. And I don't want to minimize those. You might be a little bit older. And have you noticed, depending on which news channel you're watching, they tell you if you're this age, you're in big trouble. Or if you're this age or you're this age, you might have a health issue that makes you high risk. You might be going through some sort of chemo or treatment or working with those who are at high risk health-wise. Maybe you're just so worried. Maybe you feel like I'm fine, but oh my gosh, my mom or my dad or my grandparents. And you're even wondering, should I go visit them? And, and what if I go visit them and I am one of the carriers of this thing? And we're all sitting on pins and needles. We, you might have a sense of foreboding. You might have a sense of foreboding and a lack of peace that is not preparedness alone, but might even be ungodly or unhealthy, if I might be frank for a moment. Can I remind Christians, Jesus followers, God has got this. He's always had it. The scriptures say he holds you in his hand and no one can snatch you out of there. God's got this. The scriptures say in Romans 15, may the God of hope fill you. I'm saying it again. If God is going to fill you, well, then you might need to be emptied out first to make some room. If you're full of anxiety, annoyance, greed, pride, lust, selfishness, fear, then there's no room. If you're filled up with those things, there's no room for God. Empty those things out through prayer and confession and honesty, and then God will fill you. Well, what's he going to fill you with? Let's keep going in the scriptures. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. With all joy and peace. Let's look at the original language a little bit. See if it inspires us. Greek joy is kara, gladness, a spring of gladness. Peace, irene, serenity, health, and wellness. And notice in the scriptures, every little word counts. It's all joy. In Greek, pasis, every various kind of joy. Now, don't you want that, a spring of gladness? How many people did you run into this week that had a spring of gladness coming out of them? 
I'll tell you, I do because of Jesus Christ. Don't you want that serene, calm, and mind, body, spirit, wellness? Then empty out the junk, empty out the sin, empty out the pride, empty out the arrogance, the self-reliance, and then God comes along and fills you. And I love this. He pours and pours and pours and pours into you. The Bible is so cool because it isn't just this abstract joy or hope that's nebulous and abstract. It isn't just vague. The hope that he's given you contains something. May the God of hope fill you. May he fill you with joy and peace. You know how insurance companies always want you to bundle your home and auto? Comcast wants you to bundle all your services. I swear I am the last person in America that has a landline because I have bundled that. Your hope is bundled with joy and peace. It's a package deal. It's not just this generic, you know, hey, you have hope and it's vague and I hope that it helps you. You have it bundled with joy and peace. But how? You're thinking, I am stuck in my house. I'm running out of toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Am I getting a fever? Will things ever get back to normal? Here's your answer back to the scriptures. May the God of hope Fill you with all joy and peace. Let's build on it in believing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Now we add in believing. The hope that comes bundled with all joy and peace comes through believing. We want God to do it to us, to drop it on us, blindside us with healing and help. But the joy and peace and the hope comes in believing. You've got to believe to receive the reprieve, to alleviate the pain. Don't be deceived that God is going to leave. You have to believe. God's going to fill you with hope. Guys, God is going to fill you with hope, and the scriptures and his Holy Spirit are that hope rope. So don't be a dope who says, nope, I don't want that hope, or I'll find another way to cope. Get filled with God's hope. Now check out the payoff. We're walking through the scriptures. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in love. This isn't self-help or trying hard. The Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus Christ on earth, in your life, in the believer, by his power, that's how you will abound in hope. I'm going to murder the Greek on this one. It's hope is perisui. It's also how you call a pig in Arkansas. Perisiu, it's hope that, go, gosh, I hope, now that we're filming everything, I hope no one ever plays that clip again, ever. This isn't just a little bit. This is hope that goes, here's the word, beyond, surpasses, over and above. And the English translators in their futile attempts to capture the grandeur of God Settle on this word, abounding. You won't just get a little hope. You'll be overflowing. Oh, God, that we might overflow with hope and not just cope. Oh, God, that we would take seriously the promise of your word and not freak out and flail like so much of the world to approach this with sobriety and with reverence for the severity of the situation, but to be flooded with an abundance of hope, abounding in hope, a model and a reflection of Jesus Christ himself. What a way to live. God's going to fill us with hope. you got to pull on that hope rope, and don't be a dope who says, nope, I want to find a different way to cope. Get filled up with God's hope. How do you apply this scriptures? Hopefully I taught you something. Hopefully I've just gotten you used to watching church for the next couple weeks. But what I'm really excited about is how do you apply this? God's spirit is going to work in you and encourage you on how to do that. So let me just give you some real simple ones. Focus on Jesus, not the madness around you. Be all Hebrews chapter 12, you know, Hebrews chapter 11, the faith chapter. 
I fix my eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of my faith. How do I abound in hope? Man, if you're stuck in your house, if you're getting that alone time now, dig into your faith, dig into your Bible, be texting people, encouraging scriptures, be keeping that communion with your small group and with your Christian support team and with your family. Dig in. Don't run away. Don't doubt God. Cling to him. Simply from the scriptures, believe. Believe that God is our hope. Believe that he will fill you with joy and peace. And believe that he has enough power in the Holy Spirit to do it. The Bible says the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is available to us. Believe that. And if you'll let me rhyme one more time, make some sound while you abound. You dig? Make some sound while you abound. I mean, praise him. Pray out loud. Tell others. Serve others. Find that person in your neighborhood who's older or sick or discouraged and bring them groceries. Leave some hand sanitizer on their porch. Write them an encouraging note if you want to respect your social distance and you're concerned about that. I don't know, but look around you and find those ways to bless others. Be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Let's pray together, church. I want to invite you, even though you're just in your living room, close your eyes. Even though you're just sitting at a cubicle. Even though you're not feeling like you're in church, you're about to as we worship him and glorify his name. Let's pray together. God, may my hope be in you. You are the God of hope. Heal this nation. Encourage our hearts. Make us stronger through trial. Cause us to no longer be so easily deceived, but cause us to be believed when we say, our God will never leave. Oh God, make us testifiers, make us instruments of your abounding hope. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Now I encourage you to listen and hopefully to participate with us as we sing about the good grace of God through Jesus Christ. together strange as neighbors our blood is one children of generation of every nation of kingdom come so don't let your heart be troubled hold your head up
we just stop for a moment and we recognize the beauty of you, the glory of you, the grace and mercy of you today, the hope that is you. Lord, I just pray that we are blessed, that we have spiritually come together this weekend. All over town and all kinds of different interesting situations. Somebody's watching on the bus right now and they are believing that God loves them and has a plan for them. Now, if you're with me right now, I want to ask that you make sure you close your eyes and bow your heads wherever you are. And I want to give you an opportunity to invite Jesus Christ into your life. There are many followers of Jesus watching and gathering and being with their family and looking at the screen and worshiping. But maybe there's someone out there somehow that's never invited Jesus Christ into their life. If you haven't, I want you to know that God loves you. He's crazy about you. He is in control of the world. He made you. And the 
The Bible says that since God made us, that makes him our Lord, our leader, our master, our everything. Then our lives don't work right unless we acknowledge that he's the Lord, unless we admit that he's the Lord and we're not. And the Bible says that the reason we can't do that is because we have sin. And the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory and perfection of God. And so we should be lost. We should be damned to hell. We should be punished for our sins. That's what we deserve. Not because we're all terrible and we're all mean, but because we don't all do what it takes to get in the presence of God, which is to have our sins forgiven and washed away. That only happens through what God's Son, Jesus Christ, did on the cross. That only happens because God gave his one and only son to die for your sins, to be punished in your place, so that all of the wrong and all of the punishment that sin deserves could be piled onto his one and only beautiful son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus did it willingly. Jesus did it obediently so that you could have salvation and heaven. But you have to admit you're a sinner that needs that. To restore that redemptive relationship with God, you have to say, I'm a sinner. And I know that Jesus Christ died for my sins. Jesus, come into my life and be my Lord. If you'd like to make that decision right now in your living room, on the bus, at your desk, looking at your phone when you should be doing something else, if you'd like to invite him into your life right now, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Close your eyes bow your heads and say, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. God, I know that you're the creator. I know you set the rules. I know you love me. I confess right now that I am a sinner, deserving of hell and punishment. But instead, you've offered me grace and forgiveness. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe he rose from the grave. And I call him Lord today. Lead my life, Jesus. Teach me your ways. Connect me to your church. Today I start my relationship with you, God. If you prayed that prayer and if you hung with us all morning, all God's people out there say amen. 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 Well, I want to run down a couple things uh, before we call it a day. Don't forget to give in this time. You'll see a little button right over there. Bloop. A little button over there. It's important. This is going to be a challenging time for every church that loves Jesus Christ. And so don't forget to give and take this time to look on the website or do whatever you need to do to be consistent, but we're going to be praying for you too, because we know some of you are going to be going through some really tough times, and maybe already are. I want you to look over on this side of our website too, and just see all of those great things. We want a prayer request from you. You'll, next week, we'll have our response card up, but if you're new, use that prayer request button today and just let us know you're new, but also if we can pray for you, hit that button, let us know how we can be praying for you. You'll see over there a study guide for kids and for adults. We want you to dig into the scriptures deeper next week, unless, you know, who knows what will be happening next week, but we're going to dig back into the book of Philippians, and you're going to hear great truth as we round up that book. Don't forget to give, and if you want to invite Jesus into your life, if you prayed that prayer with me or you're thinking about it, there's another button over there called the Jesus card. Click on that and read and pray how to invite Jesus Christ into your life. Do all of that right on our homepage or on our Facebook page or get the sermons on Vimeo, but it's going to be exciting to see what God does with our church and every church that loves him. Have an outstanding rest of your day, and whatever God has called you to be and to do, shine for him in the Lord Jesus Christ.